the mechanic who changed his brake chamber epically failed. Today, I would like to talk about the safety of the air supply, the air supply to your brakes. It is really important uh, to, to maintain, to inspect, and uh, just to uh, be very wary and, and careful of what is happening with your braking system. I'm gonna tell you the backstory of how it is that I got the mechanic to come in, replace this brake chamber, and ultimately led to this. Uh, this, by the way, was kinked. I tried pulling my trailer out uh, for an inspection and discovered that one, one of my brakes was, was locking up and it was kinked. No air supply uh, was being provided to the brakes to release it. And that's how I discovered it. Luckily, it didn't get kinked in the highway uh, where the brakes could have locked up and caused a big issue. About two weeks ago, I did my deliveries for the day and I was driving back and pulled into a fuel station when I heard a big, a big pop. I thought it was one of my tires that exploded. When I tried pulling up to the fuel station, I couldn't move any anymore. The, the trailer brakes were all locked up. To my luck, the brake chamber exploded in the fuel station uh, property and not on the busy road or even worse on the highway. When an explosion like this happens, you literally have three seconds before all the air is evacuated and you're no longer able to, to move because all the, all the brakes are all locked up. Most of the times when a brake chamber goes, it's just a small leak. It would take a long time for the air to evacuate and for the brakes to lock up but this case it was super it's super rare i think that all of the air just depleted within three seconds and, it, and the brakes locked up comment down below and let me know how common it is for these brake chambers to go so continuing with the story after my brakes locked up i called my trailer mechanic and he referred me to a road service so this road service guy I had never met I called him the guy came and did it in about maybe 45 minutes I'd say 45 minutes he replaced it fairly quickly but he didn't take the time to do this properly so I'm gonna make this uh, happen right now and I show you I'll show you exactly what needed to be done here to get this done properly That's a size 22, but it's really corroded. I'm having a little bit of a hard time with one hand here. I need both my hands for this. What ended up happening here is that you're supposed to counter spin this many times before you begin to thread it in. He did it a little bit, so I guess he does know what he's doing, but the problem is, he didn't do it enough. I've countered, turned it before I'm about to put it in now, a, a few extra times. I need both my hands for this. So now it's threading in. It's turning in. And then now this should unkink itself. Spin it a few more times with the wrench. That should be plenty of turns. I'm pretty sure it won't leak. That brake chamber I replaced myself. That is going to be another video for another day on how to replace these brake chambers properly. Look how clean that looks. You have to be aware of the dangers of replacing these things. These things, if you do a bad move, you can die. Okay, there's a spring that is loaded in there if you release this you're most likely going to die okay don't ever release that that is holding a spring look he, he left this open too 
this is really important to cover these a lot of dirt salt and everything goes in there and it damages the airbag inside look how clean that looks now if DOT or the MTO see these lines all twirled up like that like how it used to be a few minutes ago they're gonna pull you right in and they're going in for a level 2 inspection you want to be able to catch these things in your inspection very important you have to inspect your truck on a daily basis speaking of inspecting I also have to change something else these glad hand mounts have to be replaced the glad hands themselves look okay I just need to change the rubber look the glad hand is not even parallel anymore it's on an angle but that is because all of this is corroded if the DOT MTO sees that they'll make you replace it immediately and they won't let you go you can also see on this rubber that it's, it's just not completely fitting in there, right? That's because there's corrosion all inside there. All the moisture that gets in there and it gets it corroded. If that ever lets out and breaks off and it can no longer hold the, the glad hand, all the air is gonna evacuate and if you're on the highway, you're gonna be in big problems. I ran into a little bit of a problem with rem the removal of this glad head mount. This attachment right here, as you can see, it's stuck. It's not coming off and it actually broke as well. Learn from my mistake. When you buy this glad head mount, buy this attachment, what ended up happening is that I gotta cut, the, I gotta cut this hose and make it as straight as possible right there so it fits into this connection these bolts were all seized i had to spray them like a couple times uh yesterday uh and it's uh when when you run into trying to replace these things when they're this old they're definitely going to give you a lot of trouble Sometimes the smallest jobs seem like they're gonna be the easiest and take the least amount of time. But in fact, sometimes it takes the longest and it gives you the biggest headaches.